Genevieve don't choke up on me now. Step on the line, quick. You catch the gun ball. Get up and drive fast. Faster. I can't push Genevieve any faster. She'll unravel. Speed it up. Let her unravel. Hey, take that gun out of my neck, will you? What if you hit a bump and your finger would slip? Then where would I be? You ought to know. Turn the next corner. I don't see any. Turn anyway. Now! Genevieve. Now look what you... And I let her raise my goose pimples. Now I am mad. <laughs> Came out of here and made me smash my car. Look, young man, if you're trying to confuse me, you're doing all right. So far, I got a girl, a corpse, and a wrecked car. Now, what's the connection? Well, the girl did a sprint and disappeared, so I nursed Genevieve back to the Hamilton shops. Genevieve? <laughs> My car. I named it after the first girl that had a ride in her. Now, the man's lying underneath the window in the hall. Come on, I'll show you. Well, it's your job as a police officer to look into this sort of thing, isn't it? Well, we're taking care of it. Officers are at the Hamilton apartment now. <laughs> Captain Jaffe speaking. About six foot, I should say. No, all dialed up in the tuck. But according to the papers in the briefcase, his name must be Horace Dorn, neutral building, lawyer. Take another look under the windows in the hall. What did you say the dead man looked like you found? Well, he was stocky and he wore a check suit. I only took a quick look. Uh, maybe you were too quick. You positive he was dead? Oh, deader than a mackerel. Officers found a murdered man in a Hamilton apartment. You're right about that. Now you're telling me. But he isn't short and stocky, and he isn't wearing a check suit. He's tall and thin, and he's dressed in a tuxedo.
Flight 11 of the Hamilton Ocean View Track, as per map recorded in Book 10, page 6. What am I around here, a museum piece? I, I don't understand. Well, neither do I. You said you gave my paper to the head clerk. Where is he? Mr. Funnel will be back presently. Are you Miss Mary Rawlins? Yes. You better come along with me. Captain Jaffe would like to ask you a few questions. I don't get it. Why should I be cooped up here all night? Don't get excited, Mr. McMillan. I only asked you to wait while we investigated a crime you reported. Remember? The corpse was short and stocky. Am I supposed to believe that he grew tall and thin while he chilled? Oh, don't ask me. How the heck do I know? Or maybe he got up and changed from a check suit into a tuxedo after he was killed. Oh, fudge. Then again, maybe two people were murdered. And if there were, what have you done with the other body? Go on, I don't start that again. It's getting monotonous. Of course, I know where murder's concerned. People often do to see things like black suits, brown suits, and green suits. Now, tell me, did you or did you not see a dead man in a check suit? Oh, you figured out. I'm through. You don't believe me? That's your tough luck. I told you the truth. Captain Jaffe speaking. Send her in. Girl's been picked up. This may be the lady you're interested in. You mean the one who wrecked my car? How should I know? You're the one who'll have to identify her. Identify her? She's the one who got me into this mess. I'll pulverize her. Uh, identification is all that will be necessary, Mr. McMillan. And thank you for staying. Oh, you being polite just stops me, Mr. Jaffe. Captain Jaffe, if you don't mind. This the young lady who jumped on your car? I'll say she is. What's the idea of beating it away? You were complaining about being detained, uh, Mr. McMillan. You may go now. What's your name? Give me a pencil. I'm going to collect plenty from you for smashing my car. I'm sorry, but that's a civil suit, not in my department. Thanks for your help, and you will stay in town. Well, now that we've met, you couldn't make me leave here. I mean, her. Seems like a determined young man. Well, I'll manage to have his old car fixed all right, but in the meantime, I have more important things on my mind. Yes, so have I. Sit down, please. You didn't go back to your apartment last night. No, I stayed at a hotel. I felt someone was following me, and I was afraid to go home. I see. You were trying to record this deed to the Hamilton property when the police found you. That's right. Tell me, where did you get this? I took it from the safe in the Hamilton apartment last night. Simple as that, huh? Don't you know robbery is a crime? It wasn't robbery. I had a perfect right to open that safe. Matilda Hamilton was my aunt. Tell me, Miss Rollins, uh, why did you go there at night? Well, my aunt died suddenly, and with the responsibilities of the funeral, I forgot all about the deed until last night. Then I decided to get it before Horace Doran opened the safe. Why didn't you want Doran to get the deed? Oh, he'd have destroyed it without a qualm. He had a lot of influence over my aunt and always opposed my idea to build community centers such as the Hamilton shop. Yeah. Is that why you were quarreling with him yesterday in his office? No, we we're always quarreling. I just don't like him. There was a new note in your dislike yesterday. You said you wished he was dead. I certainly did. There's nothing new in that. Oh, yes, there is. You got your wish. Last night in the same room where you were robbing the safe, Horace Dawn was murdered. Thanks for bringing me home. Smart. Trying to get away from me coming home with the police. But I'm clever, too. I followed you back to the scene of your crime. Crime? The only crime I commit here is selling ladies' hats. I'll say they're crimes. I noticed your name out front. Mary Rollins, milliner. That's great. I thought I was going to have to attach your salary, but now I can get a judgment now. Did I ask you to bump into that wall? What? Say, if you want to get about killing the men in your life, that's your business. But my car is my business, and you're going to have it fixed right now. Oh, I am, am I? Yes, you are, are you? You're lucky I'm not suing you for the wear and tear on my nerves, let alone my sleepless night. 
You do look a little tired. <laughs> you don't look like you had any vitamins yourself, either. Would you like a cup of coffee? I need one myself. Come on. Sit down. Here, you can make the toast. Hey, you've got a nice setup here. Uh-uh. Remember, you're the guy that came to collect for a damaged car. Oh, we can forget about that. Uh, temporarily, I mean. I'm going to fix Genevieve up a little bailing wire, and she'll run as good as a whip. Thanks. That'll help a lot. You need more help than that right now. You know, Jeff, if he lets you go, you're in a hot spot. Not as hot a spot as you're in, Mr. Uh... Jimmy? Jimmy McMillan. You know what the police think of you, Mr. McMillan? Sure, they think I'm a sap for letting you get away. No, I wasn't referring to that. They don't believe your story. They think you're my accomplice. Accomplice in what? Murder. <laughs> Murder, she says. You kidding me? I wish I were. We're partners in crime. Sorry? No, but uh, partners shouldn't have any secrets, so come on, let's hear it, let's hear it. What do you want to hear? You see Horace Dorn last night? No. As I was closing the safe, I heard someone in the hall. Then a shot was fired. I ran out, met you. When I got there with Jaffe, the safe was open and empty. Jaffe didn't tell me that. Jaffe doesn't tell you anything. He's too busy asking. That means that Matilda's jewelry's gone. I didn't see any jewelry. Come here a minute. Show you something. Somebody came out of one of those doors last night and followed you. That's what the police think, but they've questioned everyone in the shop. Yeah, they questioned us, too, but we're still at large. Mm, so is the murderer. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's have our coffee, huh? This isn't any kind of a breakfast for a couple of first-class suspects. What do you say we have some ham and eggs? Ah, uh, woman, you interest me greatly. How do you like your eggs? Oh, fry one on one side and one on the other. Mexican? No, that belonged to Zuma. It was carried by one of her knife men. She had 200 knife men. Hello, McMillan. Well, hi, Captain Jaffe. <laughs> That's quite a fish sticker, isn't it? Oh, yes, Adam is very fond of knives. It's his playtime hobby. He knows the personal history of every death-dealing blade in this tomb. Doing a little private sleuthing, huh, McMillan? Well, I'm trying to protect myself in the clinches, Jaffe. Well, I can't blame you for that. Maybe I can help you a little. Uh, what would you deduct is in there? Oh, a box. Well, that's closed in the Egyptian chest. Adams claims it was stolen the night of the murder. Uh, that door leads to the storage cellars. We've searched. It isn't down there. Oh, don't jump at conclusions, McMillan. Adams has a perfect alibi. Of course, you can't always trust alibis, but his is rather unique, isn't it, Adams? Yes, uh, I hope so. Uh, you see, the night of the murder, he was being IQ tested by a psychiatrist. What for? Public office? No, insanity. He went to the morgue and tried to borrow a body. Borrow a body? Yes, he wanted to experiment with an embalming fluid he found in a tomb in Egypt that he wanted to make a mummy. Oh, and while he was trying to make a mummy, somebody stole his chest? Something like that. Yes, and that chest is very valuable to me. I want it back. Yes, well, I'll do all I can. Come along, McMillan. I doubt if you learn anything more from Mr. Adams. You know, uh, an antique dealer with a possible trace of insanity whose hobby is long knives makes a swell suspect, doesn't he? Yeah. Collect the damages to your car? No, no, the girl says she hasn't got any money right now. Funny, I was under the impression she was the sole heir to all this property here. Wonder if she is. The will hasn't been found yet. You know, it's friend to friend, you better get your money. I might have to put her in jail tomorrow. You're not going to put that girl in jail tomorrow. Or ever. I hope you're right. Maybe you are. You know, I found out you were correct about the short, stocky man in the Hamilton Hall. Now, don't tell me you finally believe there's a dead man in a check suit. There was a man, all right. A dangerous one. But he wasn't dead. Oh, you funny man. I suppose he got up and walked away. 
Something like that. Yeah. Watch your step if you happen to meet him. You know, I'd advise you to stay out of all this, but I see it wouldn't do any good, so... Uh... Hey, you are, McMillan. Take your choice. Behind one of those doors is a murderer. Let's hope we get him before he gets us. Good day. Why you keep wandering around? What are you doing, making a cook's tour? No. I'm picking up clues. Besides, I like to know the caliber of the people that live around here. Tracing in and out of these shops isn't going to get you anywhere. I'll bet you haven't learned one thing. Oh, yes, I have. How long have you known Claude Burns, the silversmith? Mm, about ten years, boy. I think he's the one followed you in the Hamilton Apartments and stole the jewelry. So he can melt it in that stew pot of his. Mm -hmm. Huh. The way you figure things out, you'll be suspecting me next. What's more, Miss Dildak, I think he hid the stuff underneath the shops, down in the cellar. How's it really brilliant? Hey, is there any liquor down there? Well, there might be some spirits, but I don't think in bottles. Well, I could sure do with a drink right now. I don't suppose that you'd uh, want... No, no. Oh, well, anyway, I'd rather have Donald Adams' chest. What? The Egyptian chest Adams claims was swiped. The markings on the floor, why... Too big to take very far, so I deduced it. You know, deducing isn't so hard. Even you could do it. Now, for instance, if you wanted to hide a thing like, uh, well, like that there over there, where would you put it? That's my hook chest. I don't want to hide it. Oh, come on. Give me a little cooperation, I will you? I am. Now, you knew I wanted you to stay down in the cellar. Oh, well, Adams has probably searched there. Hey, you got another flashlight besides the one you poked in my neck? Mm-hmm, I think so. Give it to me. You want to come along? No, I don't think I'd better leave the apartment. What's the matter? You afraid you get killed? No. I'm afraid they might rent it while I was gone. <laughs> come on. We will. Fight it. Spiders give you the creeps, Mary? Yes. Me too. Get 
door a minute. Mm -hmm. My shop's just above. What was that? What's what? I thought I heard footsteps. You did. I was just stamping. Question, Jimmy. We've already told the police everything we know. Did you tell him you put this body down here? Oh, we didn't. We just discovered it. I don't believe you, and it's my duty as a law-abiding citizen to inform the police I caught you red-handed. Those Jews you stole were worth fortunes. Your aunt used to bring them to me to be cleaned. How did you know they were missing? I just heard Mary ask you about them. Claude, Jimmy didn't take the jewelry. We think Adams, the antique dealer, did. That's his Egyptian case. Adams? I never liked that fellow. The feeling is mutual. You go ahead and notify the police if you want to. Until Jaffe locks me up, I'm going right out looking for the answers. Claude, it wouldn't do any harm to wait a couple of days, would it? I don't know. I have to figure out what to do. So do we. You know, Adams was talking about making a mummy. You saw the man's hands. You think he had something to do with binding him up like that? Yeah, it could be. we got to prove it. You two mind if we go somewhere else to do our proving? I wondered who was prowling around down here. Had some stuff in the super and couldn't leave it to find out. This is Jimmy McMillan, Henry Gregor. You know Mr. Burns. How do you do? Well, you have to see the police didn't lock you up. Oh, no, I outsmarted them. Covered my tracks so they couldn't find a single clue. Ah, thank you. Come on in. Mr. McMillan is thinking of taking quarters here. Fine, fine. The shops are really nice, McMillan, even if they don't have murders every day. What's your line? I'm an architect. Oh, yeah, I studied it myself once. No, wasn't exciting enough for me. Say, these are pictures of actual crimes, aren't they? He guessed it, huh? <laughs> Do you have anything to do with them? Only Lansdale, my boy, only Lansdale. Oh. Not all of them, of course. Some are copies of the famous crimes of history. Now, that is Dr. Lando. <laughs> Murdered 11 wives. He was engaged to be married when they caught him. Begged to be let go so he could make it an even dozen. Oh, Jimmy, <laughs> stop it. Many doesn't like my crime gallery. Here's one you haven't seen. Oh, beautiful. 
not a connection of mine. Me, Smokey Gordon, kingpin swindler of two continents. Really a slick customer, Gordon. You say he's a crook? Crook? He's a genius. <laughs> and he's he attractive to women. Like the diamond studded dowagers I photographed with nothing on their minds but tiaras. Diamond tiaras haven't been invoked since Heck was a pup. No, Gordon is still getting away with whatever they were nowadays. You know, I never could figure out he set up with your Aunt Matilda. Did he know her? Did he? <laughs> they were just like that. Where'd you get this picture, Gregor? Hmm. Come on, Mr. McMillan. Here, go up these stairs to my studio. Not so many cobwebs. I photographed Horace Dawn the other night in a Hamilton apartment. It was a beautiful job of stabbing. I'm going to add him to my collection. Never like that skin flint. For my money, he's better off dead. That's a horrible thing to say, Henry. Why not admit none of the tenants like Dawn? So he can show you out. Got to stay down here with my soup. <laughs> uh. I'm afraid of that man. So am I. You're gonna have to watch him. Now I know what Jaffe meant when he said the man I found in the Hamilton apartments was dangerous. Do you think the police found Gordon's fingerprints in the apartment? Jaffe doesn't believe Gordon is dead. That's why I let you go, so we could follow you. Figuring you'd lead him to Gordon. Follow me? The police? You or me, brown eyes. Take a look in the archway. And close your mouth. I'm going in. Don't you want to hear any more of my deductions? No, I don't. Well, I'm going to tell me anyway. You know that screwy photographer's gaga about you. Now, what makes you think that? Well, I can tell by the way he looked at you. But he needs lessons. I could give him cards and spades when it comes to giving you the eye. Oh, good afternoon, sir. I'm Charles Eaton. At your service. Thanks. The entire shop is yours. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, but I, I only want a coat. I'm, uh, I'm getting married. <laughs> I understand perfectly. And you wish to present the bride with something else besides yourself? Sort of the idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, in order to select the proper coat, I need to know something about your future wife's personality. See, to me, all women are types. Uh, some of them are muskrats, others foxes. And a few, like, uh, delicate ermine. Now tell me about your bride-to-be. Is she tall or short, stout or slender? Well, she's just right. Just right for what? <laughs> for a fur coat. <laughs> oh, she's about, uh, about five foot two with eyes of blue. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I think her eyes are brown. She's built just swell. Your description is perfect. I can see her clearly. She's the, uh, mink type. I think I have just the coat for you. Here we are. Running much money? 
No, this is moderately priced. Two thousand dollars. Three thousand, huh? I had no idea the furs were that expensive. Perhaps you've come to the wrong place for what you want. Well, I came to the right place, but I don't seem to be getting anywhere. I brought out this masterpiece because I had no way of judging you financially. You should have given a hint. Most men do. Diamond ring, expensive hat, or a $30 shirt. There are various ways. I can't tell by looking at you whether you got a lot of money or not. That's because you don't appreciate the brilliance and quality I have. A slick, smooth line like those stuffed animals over there with a glossy front. Brother, you got it. That's exactly what I mean. Those squirrels are exquisite. I mounted them myself. I could get $300 for them right now. Not from me, you couldn't. Why do people want to kill them just so they can make them look alive again? If animals were not killed, there wouldn't be any beautiful furs to adorn the beautiful women. That's another thing you should learn. Some men love to adorn women. Maybe you got something there. I'll drop around sometime a girlfriend and let you adorn her. That would give me a great deal of pleasure. Well, not so quiet in there this morning, Captain. The tenants been quarreling like a bunch of magpies. Uh, the case might crack itself if we let them fight it out. Huh? Stay for a while. Charlie, if there are any fur coats to be handed out, I'll take them. Don't be silly. I was just talking to him about fixing the roof where the rain came through. That's a lie. Why? What do you mean, by? Oh, Mary, give me the key to your aunt's apartment. What for? I want to search for that jewelry. The police have combed the place. I still want to look. No, I'm sorry. I, I can't give you the key. You want me to tell what's in the center?
looks like this is one time you're in the clear, McMillan. Or are you? That's fine. You're all in your shops and you weren't doing a thing. Yes, these two ladies say that all the shops were locked and there wasn't anybody in any of them. I think I'd better talk to you one at a time. I'll take you first, Adam. Uh, and what were you doing at the time the fatal shot was fired? Taking a bath in perfume? No, but I'm going to take one to get rid of it. What's the name of that stuff? I think Mabel calls it Nuit d'Amour. She sure poured it on. Poured it? She threw it. The shot came from over there, Mr. McMillan. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out who pulled the trigger. Without Henry, you promised if I'd help you celebrate, you'd help me with my routine. But I will. I will. When? I put the costume on the dance for you, and you haven't paid a bit of attention to me all evening. All right, my sweet little dog. See what you can do with this. I'll make the announcement. In time, have a drink. Thanks. All is McMillan? No. No, you haven't got a kind of a face, have I? But you are photogenic. Photogenic, photogenic, photogenic. Better look out for me. Why? I'm photogenic, photogenic. By the shops just now, I noticed that Jeff had called off his watchdog. What's the matter? Oh, the newspaper reporters came over to my shop tonight and they made me mad as a hatter. Oh, pursued by the press, huh? Hounded is the word. But I pried more information out of them than they did out of me. Tell me. Which one of the tenants is the killer? You're a trifle wet about the tenants, Mr. McNolan. I learned from the reporters they all have ironclad alibis. And while you were rounding out the case of the news hounds, I suppose you found out what happened to Ann Matilda's little collection of gems. No, I didn't. But I found out the police haven't got them. Do you mind telling me what the slick smooth talking for is using for an alibi? He is a slick sort of person. A mighty person. What's he using for an alibi? The skeleton in Eaton's closet has been on Earth. Only it isn't bony. It's Mabel. Too bad you didn't investigate the theatrical queen who runs the perfume palace next to the fur shop. You might have learned something. At the time of the murder, Eaton was with Mabel. I wasn't there, Charlotte. But from all indications, he wasn't. Maybe I'm missing something. Could be. Why don't you look around? Uh, my mind was on clues, not cuties. But since you mentioned it, I think I'll give Mabel a once over. Don't worry, I'll resist her charms. You'd better not go near her, or she'll try to get you to finance her in a show. 
that I collect from my car, I'm not going to finance anybody. Friends and fellow tenants of the Hamilton shop, you no doubt are wondering why the celebration. You all know me by day as a portrait artist. Some of you also know that by night I follow my hobby of police photography. And at last, I may say modestly, my greatness has received its reward. The police cameraman's Oscar, presented to me not for making bread and butter pictures of diamond studded dowagers, but for the police pictures I took a year ago that enabled the FBI to capture the Louis gang. Oh, McMillan, what did you decide about the fur coat? Well, I, I haven't made up my mind yet, but I'll be around. Is Mary the prospect for the matrimony you were talking about? Well, it could be. Can't say I blame you. I'm kind of fond of her myself, especially since she's heir to the uh, Hamilton estate. You might not understand, Mr. Eaton, but my interest in Mary would not be financial. Oh. But yours would be, wouldn't it, Charles? Mary. You saw McMillan in my shop. Said he was looking for a coat for his bride-to-be. Oh? I meant you. What's your connection with these murders, McMillan? Well, I might ask you the same. I'm in the clear, and I'm going to stay there. It would be right smart of you if uh, you did the same. Meaning what? Keep nosing around. You're liable to be next. Come along with me, McMillan. There's something downstairs that will interest you. Sorry to drag her away, Ethan. Where are we going? Down, down in the dark room. You might let your future bride in on the secret when you go shopping for fur coats. Well, I had an excuse to talk to him, did I? Oh, then it was only an excuse. What are you two arguing about? He told Eaton he was going to marry me without even asking me. You didn't ask her? No. You shouldn't neglect things like that, Macmillan. Somebody might beat you to it. I'll say they might. Women are sure funny, but I like them. Especially Mary. I have known her ever since she was a little girl. I like her, too. I've only known her since she was a big girl. <laughs> Sorry she hasn't stayed. I have some good news for her. You can tell her. The police are on the trail of Dawn Skewer because of a picture I took. I photographed this stone train last night on the safe that was robbed. Well, whose is it? It's Smokey Gordon's. You sure it's Gordon's fingerprint? Not his finger, his thumb. See, they're exactly alike. Well, I don't know much about this stuff. I, I guess you're right. Of course I am right. The worlds match perfectly. You say Gordon robbed the safe last night? Yes. A jeweler's downtown in the wholesale district. But he left this grand thumbprint so he won't be around long to enjoy his little gotten game. I'm a little dizzy. I, I guess it's the champagne. I'm not used to this stuff. So, excuse me, will you? And thanks again for the party and congratulations on your medal.
reason why I shouldn't affect you like that. Or should it? I quit being a baby. But that man, might as well have killed me. Scare me to death. Did he hurt you? No. I opened the door and started to turn on the light, and he grabbed my arm. Well, I followed him over to the Hamlin Apartments. I guess I'm not much of a hero, Mary. He clunked me in there to get to see him. I think it was Timothy Green. Who's Timothy Green? The gardener and handyman around here. I'm sure you've seen him. Oh, yeah. I saw him give a flower to that uh, Mabel de Rose yesterday. What's that got to do with him coming in here tonight? Well, it might have a lot to do with it. Anything missing in the shop? No, not that I know of. Come on, let's take a look. What's this? I don't know. Why, these are Aunt Matilda's. Well, look at this. Your aunt was Smokey Gordon's wife. That's impossible. Not according to this certificate of marriage, it isn't. But that was recorded in Spain. Ties just as tight and out there as any place. Remember what that photographer said? Your aunt and Smokey Gordon were just like that. Horace Thorne knew about this. That explains his hold on your aunt. This is what Gordon was after. He wanted to prove his legal ownership to half her property. Then I wasn't the sole heir. Why, this will supply the police with a motive. That's right. Jeff, you claim you found this license in the safe. Gordon and Dorn surprised you and you killed him. That giant green. He must have known. Why, he probably planted this package here to frame me and... Oh, Jimmy, he's a murderer. I know he is. No, no. The police think Gordon did it. They found his thumbprint on a safe last night. How could Gordon rob a safe when he's dead in the cellar? I don't know. I don't know. I got it! Oh, don't yell so loud. I've got a splitting headache. What have you got? I know the killer. Oh, Jimmy, I don't believe you. I don't ask you. I don't ask you. Wait till I get the proof. Jimmy, I gave Burns a key. Wait a minute. Tell me, who is it? I thought there weren't going to be any secrets between partners. Now, I think, Gregor, if the hand is down a little bit, you now see, wait it a minute, covers wait the a face up. You turn your face a little bit over this. No, I no, got no, the no, eyes. Now, now, wait a minute. About yes, a minute. Yes, I've been yes, yes. photographing I, before. I, 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 I know what to do. Now, just a moment. I don't want to clean up again after your blitz. I think this is what you're looking for. You get around fast. Who kept you off? I admit I was tipped off. A woman phoned and said she was being double-crossed. Might search your place now and crack the Dorn case. This looks like I was given the right steer. You got anything to say? No. I was told to keep my mouth shut, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, in that case, you'd better come along. Good night, Gregor. Good night. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thank you very much. Had a wonderful time. Good night. Good night, Henry. Lovely time. Good night, Henry. You 
I've just figured out who tipped you off. Who? Mabel DeRose. Pretty good guess. That isn't a guess. That's where Jimmy is. Say, I'm not going to let that perfume gal get her hands on my boyfriend. Turn around. package in her shop. Is that right, Timothy? That's right. I gave Shut her... Shut up, I tell you. Now, Mabel, you told me if I gave that girl a package, you'd marry me. Oh, you fool, you. Hello? This is Jimmy McMillan. Will you tell Captain Jaffe to come over to Mabel DeRose's apartment? What? He did? Oh. All right, sit down. That's funny. Whoever that was said Jaffe was on his way up here. Turn these two over to the police when they get here. Mabel's job is to get rid of the jewels. I'm going after the real killer if it isn't too late. Put him down. Now, wait a minute, mister. Don't shoot me. I haven't got a rod on me. I'm glad you realize you're caught. This alarm will bring the police immediately. Oh, I have a heart. Don't turn me in, will you? I didn't mean anything. Oh, so you're the fellow that's been hanging around Mary Rollins and couldn't remember the color of her eyes. But you could remember the layout of my place, all right. You were casing the joint. I think that's what you cheap crooks call it. You were planning to clean out my place. You're probably the one that took the Hamilton gems. And you know they were missing. Oh, Captain, this man is falsely accusing you. Just a minute, Mabel. I don't know what he's accusing you of, but I'm charging you with robbery. You telephoned me and gave me the hot tip to pick up Miss Rollins here. But you're not as good an actress as you thought you were. I recognize your voice. McMillan got these, Captain. Says he was going after the killer. Captain, some of these didn't belong to my aunt. Yes, I know. Tell me, why did you frame Miss Rollins? I thought Charlie Eaton was trying to make a play for us. Eaton. All right, break it up. There he is, Captain. I caught him red-handed. He was trying to steal my phone. I hope you see he spends this long stretch in jail. I'll see the justice is done. Morgan, give me your bracelet. your mind. That small town safe is the one. Take these handcuffs off. This is an insult. You're insulting the right person, McMillan? Yeah, you've got to figure right, Captain Jaffe. Take these off at once. All in good time, Mr. Eaton. All in good time. All right, Jimmy, let's have it. Make it quick and it better be good. Well, this high-class furrier followed Mary into the Hamilton apartment. He saw the jewelry. And when Dorn and Gordon arrived, he shot one and he stabbed the other. I'm sure going to enjoy seeing you hang, Mr. Eaton. 
What proof have you got, Jimmy, that Eaton is the killer? When Eaton was making his getaway with the jewelry, he recognized the body of Smokey Gordon, and it gave him an idea how to become a master criminal in one easy lesson. Eaton knew Gordon was the crook, didn't he, Gregor? Sure, he saw Gordon's picture over at my place. What do you mean, body? Gordon robbed a safe last night. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. Gordon is making believe he's an Egyptian mummy in the cellar right under our feet. Did he steal my chest? Yes. <laughs> and he put Gordon's body in it. He was going to leave Gordon's thumbprints all over the scenes of his crime, and the police would go on looking for Gordon, but they wouldn't find him. He's dead and buried. Well, that won't work. The police can detect a mole. No, he didn't use a mole. Before he buried Gordon, he took the skin off Gordon's thumbs. This would-be master criminal used to be a taxidermist. I learned that when he told me about those stuffed squirrels. I think if you have your men search the place, you'll find a couple of thumb stalls around somewhere. I figured that out when I saw Gordon's hands wrapped up like a mummy's. I think Burns found the jewelry in the cellar and Eaton killed him. All the things aren't in Naples' apartment, so they must be here, Captain Jaffe. What do you say, Eaton? Do we search? Well, I might as well tell you. Find out anyway. It's in the safe in the back room, along with the thumb stall. All right, boys. Take him out. Don't mention it, Captain Jaffe. Nice work, Jimmy. 43, 44, 45. Now, if you don't think I know I'm being gypped, you're wrong. $45 to fix that heap of tin you drive. What about the damage to my heart? I didn't charge you for that. That'll take me years and years of close association to fix. Boy, what an association. No other stockholders. Not yet.